So if you look at the first of the four etudes, and maybe we can go to a, a split screen here where you can see my hands on the keyboard, you'll notice that this is an exercise in playing major seventh and major ninth chords, which you'll notice that I've, I write a major seven, a seven with a, a bar across it, and I write a major ninth with a nine with a bar across it. In case you're from uh, South America or Europe or somewhere where your sevens are ordinarily barred, this doesn't mean a dominant seventh chord, it means a major seventh chord. Now you'll see that this is a 16 bar phrase, just for example, that has an F pedal tone, which means the whole thing is based over an F. Now if I play the, the right hand chords in the treble clef, I'm playing a major ninth, an F major ninth. Then I go to a B flat major ninth, E flat major ninth, A flat major ninth, D flat major ninth. So let's say I play this in a, a moderate tempo, and I Maybe if you have a, uh, a computer or a, something that'll give you a constant pedal tone, you could, you could record a track first with just a lot of Fs on the bass line. I'm gonna... B flat. E flat. A flat. D flat. G flat. Back to F. is a study in uh, really going through all the changes in the book, uh, gradually moving down in steps of a four in a two bar phrase. So basically what the chords are is like C minor 11. Now we do the same thing starting on G minor. Then go to D minor. And then A minor. See? Okay, now let's start looking uh, at the next thing in the booklet, which is a tune of mine called Blues Blues, or people say Be Loose Blues. I call it Blues Blues. It's a little uh, kind of a bebop tune that I wrote a few years ago and recorded on an album called Trio on the DMP label. Uh, you'll notice the way I'd like you to look at, this is a, a nice, concise, clear way of writing a lead sheet. On the top line, you'll notice I've written the melody all the way through for 12 bars, and then there's a repeat sign back. So let's try it at a uh, slower than normal tempo. I'll count it off here in 4-4. Four, four. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> See, now let's switch parts where I play the top line, the melody. I'll just play it without chords, single line, and you play the chords. Same thing. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> now, what you want to do, this is very difficult to. Uh, to talk about when you're constructing a solo on something, uh, first of all, it's entirely up to you, you know, your tempo, the mood you want to create, how complex you want to get. Uh, there's an infinite number of factors involved in soloing in jazz. Uh, the basic things are, at least for our purposes now, is to stick pretty close to the harmonic structure you've decided on. Uh, try to use the scales that refer to those different chords. Try to figure out if there's a part that's confusing you. Uh, figure out before you go to 
play it, uh, what scale you're going to try to pick some of your notes from. Try to pick common tones that, uh, like I can pick an F on the F minor. An F is a common tone that works through all of these. Now let's move on to uh, the next tune you'll find in the book. It's called Polly Lookout. This is a tune by our guitarist, Mike D'Amico, that we just recorded on uh, my new CD, uh, Heat of the Moment. And uh, it's written a little bit differently. It's, it's a, for one thing, it's written in cut time, in 2-2 two -two time. Although the beats go by 1, 2, 3, 4, we think of them as 1, 2, 1, 2, because it's a, a samba flavor. You know, we get the... It's a, a different approach, and we're not using the swing time now. In this one, we're using more of a, a what we call a straight eighth feel or a straight sixteenth feel. Now, you'll notice on this that I've written a one, two. So let's just look at that little seven bar interlude, which uh, happens to have an E on the melody all the way through it. So that would be uh, one, two, 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 one, two, three, four. Three, four. Now we'd be into the solo section, see? First, let's look at one more thing. There's a, just after that, you'll see a little interlude that this we would use, what, like, say, if you played the first solo, then we'd do the interlude, yeah, and then we, I'd do the next solo? Yeah, we'd state the interlude, which is kind of based on the melody a little, uh -huh. and it connects the two soloists together, uh -huh. um, you know, instead of just running right into the next soloist. So it leads up, it, it kind of finishes one and, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, gives you a connecting uh, piece. You know, wraps the, the solo up, the first solo up, and sets the next soloist up right. to play. I notice you got some interesting tensions in there too, like a, a G over B flat chord, yeah. which Those is unusual. Like uh, yeah, and then the later there's E over C again, and yep. then an E flat over B, a real something over something sound. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. yeah and that's just kind of um, to to create a mood. You can use uh -huh. those weird chords to create different moods. Let's try playing the interlude once, okay. like uh, one, two, and one, two. Mm -hmm. 